Chainsaw Man, one of the most hyped anime adaptations of all time, if not the most, has flopped. Well, the anime sales at least. And no amount of excuses, <laughs> copium, can justify this. You didn't have to be anime Nostradamus that predicted this, but when the hints were clear, fans justified it by saying Chainsaw Man Blu-rays weren't even out. They must not know about pre-orders. <laughs> well, they said Blu-rays weren't out. Well, they are now. And what do we get? 1,735. The aftermath of this news causes a never-before-seen reaction in the fan base, and after almost seeing no justification, quickly devolved into a rather disturbing conversation from Western fans. In this video, I want to clear up, to the best of my understanding, the Western versus Eastern reception, the misunderstandings of merch sales, as well as streaming, and what Mappa was potentially thinking, and how this will impact Chainsaw Man. You've been drinking that Kool-Aid, and now it is time to open up. This video is sponsored by the like button. With the power of algorithms coupled with the dislike button, which I am used to receiving, it creates a perfect storm for an echo chamber. Press the like button today to break out of this echo chamber. Psst, it's free. More on this later. Thank you, like button, for sponsoring this video. Before we continue, we need to clear some things out of the way. In this tweet by Canapa, merch sales have nothing to do with popularity or success. True, but I'd assume there should be a positive correlation at least. Keep in mind, it does not imply causation, but there should be a pretty strong positive correlation. And I'm also gonna assume most fans have never bought any merch in their lives, let alone DVDs and Blu-rays. I mean, myself, I don't even own a DVD or Blu-ray player. And modern anime is not reliant on physical media sales, true, but they still factor in other economic decisions. For example, they are definitely using the Blu-rays to promote MAPPA's Chainsaw Man Festival. More on that later. And the last tweet here basically sums up this thread, not a metric of popularity. I'm not sure what prompted these types of tweets, but I'm sure there were some really dumb comments that just got buried by the time I checked. However, I feel like we shouldn't put aside Blu-ray and DVD sales just yet. Though they're not indicative of quality or popularity, for example, Vinland Saga apparently only sold 200, and that is a great show. And no, I'm not saying Chainsaw Man is a great show, sorry. <laughs> but there is still something to be said about this topic that seems to be brushed away. I'm not going to comment on specifics on the Chainsaw Man anime, I'm going to do that in my next video. So let me know what you all liked or disliked about it, and I'll feature your comments in my next video. Just don't say peak, mid, or kino. Please, get a new vocabulary. Chainsaw Man first week Blu-ray DVD sales for volume 1 stalled at 1735, with more upvotes and replies than the number Number of sales. In the same season as Chainsaw Man, Bochi the Rock sold almost 17,000, basically a 10x over Chainsaw Man's week 1 performance. Liko Rico from the previous season sold 23,000, and even The Eminence in Shadow, a relatively underwatched isekai, sold 3,163. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I heard it was pretty decent. And you can't just say it's all oh, just Moe shows and cute girls doing cute things and slice of life. No, no, no. Look, Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, Attack on Titan. Look, no matter what way you look at it, Chainsaw man anime sales are some of the worst in the industry if not all of media especially when you think about the views to sales ratio the sales were so bad that they even reduced the price i even saw myself that they gave it a 15 percent off on amazon wow what a good deal but seriously though it is a pretty good deal because the thing is that some anime like bochi the rock only come with two episodes per disc chainsaw man comes with three episodes so it's like you're getting a pretty good deal but people are still not buying it and i'll see people mentioning the mappa store Ooh, the mappa store no the map is store is not that special. You see, Amazon, they have a bonus of a towel and a poster, which I might honestly rather have. Like, guys, stop the cap. And I'll see people mention Vinland Saga. Did Vinland Saga get the amount of hype and marketing from both the industry and the fandom that Chainsaw Man got? Did Vinland Saga get the amount of views that Chainsaw Man got? Did Vinland Saga have the manga sales that Chainsaw Man had? The answer is no to all that. Chainsaw Man was well received during the manga. Why not during the anime? That's for next video. But I'll just leave this here. It was kind of boring. And I don't even know why I'm talking about Vinland Saga. With the amount of attention Chainsaw Man got, you could sell a literal pet rock. People will literally buy anything. Influencer scams. Have you heard of the channel CoffeeZilla? You buy something and then you receive it and then it's not what you expected. Am I saying Chainsaw Man is a scam? Not really. But there is something I want to mention about streaming. More on that later. Now I'll see people saying, oh the Pochita plushies. No, your Pochita plushies are fake. They are unofficially licensed. I've literally seen giant anime Twitter accounts promoting these things that are not helping the anime industry whatsoever. No shame if you bought one, it is what it is. But most of the real ones aren't even out right now. They're mostly up for pre order. The other real ones were from back in the day from events that are kind of rare, but the arcade ones, they were purchased beforehand. So it's not like an anime fan wanted to buy one after enjoying the anime so much. They're just sitting there waiting for you to win. If it wasn't obvious how much of a flop this is already, we can take a look at the Chainsaw Man Festival to see that MAPPA was anticipating a lot more. To get into this special event, you can either 1. Buy the tickets normally, or 2. Buy the Blu-rays and DVDs, which allows you the chance to buy one of the priority application tickets. So MAPPA split the event into a daytime session and a nighttime session. Pretty normal, because 
because you know you might have work school kids and you might not be able to go at a certain time but the thing is the venue holds 8,000 people so with the daytime and nighttime session that's 16,000 people total yeah numbers are not adding up if you remember the blu-ray and dvd sales other anime also have this type of event for example demon slayer kimitsu no yaiba had an event that held 4,000 people but they had 41,000 sales for their volume 1 dvd blu-ray so if 41,000 demon slayer fans are trying to get into this 4,000 seat event you do the math and that's basically like around a 10 percent chance that some of them will get the tickets if you apply the same lottery system to chainsaw man well you have a 922 percent chance of getting in yeah you're basically getting the easiest lottery of your lifetime you will win 100 percent i know there's a nighttime session but still you are getting in no matter what it looks like mapple is seriously aiming for the moon here and it just does not look good here i mean obviously people could buy the tickets normally but when comparing with other anime with these events it is not a good look for mappa people are already selling their priority applications online for like ten dollars but i feel like they won't even be able to do that anymore because once people know about these sales they'll realize that you can just buy a ticket normally because of how easy the lottery was like there's literally no point in these priority application tickets if they don't sell enough tickets they might just cancel the event but that's not gonna look good the event is being held at the tokyo garden theater to show you a better idea of what 8,000 or 16,000 people look like here's some clips from the inside this is honestly kind of funny because these are the so-called idols that some chainsaw man fans think is just so weird like why did they rent out this place if they didn't expect it to be this packed like i wouldn't be surprised if they had some social distancing where everything was 100 seats away and by the way the group performing in this theater is love live that is easily selling out the whole stadium and one of the members is tomori kusunoki the voice actor for makima it's just funny how last time she came here as a love live member it was a packed stadium and now she might be coming back as makima to a possibly crickets a much more empty stage it's honestly sad what if mappa had her perform kickback or something they'd definitely sell some tickets there but that would just be so messed up because she technically retired from her idol career so that would just be so sad but i would not be surprised if mappa had some clause in their contract like oh you may be required to perform by singing and dancing at some event they got a lot of tickets to sell i know it'd be pretty funny to see an empty audience that day but honestly it would just be pretty sad good luck mappa good freaking luck real talk though i feel like they might pull off a playbook from love live on their website performers are subject to change they already have a couple performers scheduled to play but they have 12 ending songs so there's a lot of potential here if they can get everything set up i mean if they can get kenshi yonezu to play kickback the number one streamed anime song of 2022 according to spotify well i think they could fill the stadium if that don't work go as bts come sing kickback that'll definitely do the trick after news of this broke chainsaw man fans also broke western fans ran out of ways to cope and just started pointing fingers at the japanese like us versus them mentality us westerners the way they talk about him these clowns and while the toxicity also comes from some japanese fans for example one made a bot to spam ryo nakayama's twitter account i think many japanese fans opinions are valid or at least you can try to understand where they're coming from but you won't understand because you are stuck in an echo chamber when you see something you agree with you upvote it like it if you see something you disagree with you dislike it downvote it social media will then promote the more like posts and then more people will like it meanwhile some other people that might have agreed with the other opinion won't even see it it devolved into some xenophobic mess japanese neckbearded otakus don't want to be that racist guy brain dead pillow as girlfriend no life hiroshima 2.0 the amazon reviews for chainsaw man are terrible but you will see real chainsaw man fans some who've read the manga before most westerners including me even heard of chainsaw man you can literally see the timestamps in their review history there are real fans that just did not enjoy the anime just accept that you've been stuck in the western anime world and i feel like most people with amazon accounts have jobs unlike the ones on my anime list take that as you will there's this viral picture of ryu nakayama being used to show his supposedly arrogant behavior and the japanese fans are honest they're not really that toxic like look at these responses to be honest it wasn't bad but they didn't really like the pacing they didn't read the original but they'd enjoy the anime but this is the first time they've seen a director standing in the middle of the cast and taking the center position and they find it a little off-putting most of the toxic comments are actually coming from the western fans who just piled in after bigger twitter accounts shared it the japanese comments add some value to the conversation meanwhile the western comments are just there to clown on the japanese fans they don't understand the past interviews the past conversations in the japanese fandom the statements from the voice actors there's context that led to this situation and people just jump the gun without knowing the whole picture why do you think a video like this exists you ain't here watching clorox chainsaw man fans literally go unchecked in the west this japanese fan went on reddit to express how sad that people were calling japanese taste horrible most people are being supportive but panel to insult bochi fans they definitely got the bochi fans real good 
good, but how did this even have 74 upvotes? But if you say even one bad thing about Chainsaw Man, you'd be downvoted and ratioed so hard. Fake information gets spread around unchecked as well, if it supports Chainsaw Man at least. Like bro, just google it, you can buy Chainsaw Man on Amazon. How did this even get so many likes? Everyone knows the hive mind behavior of these fans. After my anime list tweeted about how Bochi the Rock surpassed Chainsaw Man, why did they have to reply with this after? There's definitely a reason. When making a post about the anime sales, why do you have to clarify that some stores don't report numbers? This isn't something special about Chainsaw Man. There's definitely a reason. I feel like people are missing the point when they ignore DVDs and Blu-rays and just talk about streaming. In general, people are not saying MAPPA is going bankrupt, people are not saying Chainsaw Man is unpopular, it's just that the Western fans got exposed to different opinions, which I believe are pretty valid. In East Asia, people conform in public, but in private, they are pretty much honest. The Japanese even have a term for this. This is different than what I believe is happening online in the West, especially with Chainsaw Man. Everyone is seeking validation, so it leads to conformity. It's not just some stupid Twitter drama, it's bigger than you think. On average, a whole country has a much different opinion on your favorite anime than what you thought everyone agreed with. For now, because I hope this awakens people to be honest with themselves. And this isn't just about anime, but going back to anime, we see the Japanese equivalent of my anime list, and the ratings are just okay. Nothing amazing. The Chinese equivalent? Nothing special there either. Like, how are you gonna call Japanese people brain dead when they got some of the best education in the world? Like, it would be so ironic if these people were from the US, right? Would they be saying the same things to the Chinese fans too? Because Bangumi, the Chinese anime site, actually has a ranking where they combine multiple anime ratings from other websites, including my anime list, to create an aggregate score. Bro, they did the math. Chainsaw Man gets a score of 7.64, which puts it at rank 421. For reference, Bochi the Rock gets an 8.36, which puts it at rank 31. If you've noticed, the scores are lower across the board. You might just think they're more strict, but you can call that having standards, a higher bar for quality. Japan created anime. The rest of us are casuals, normies, whatever you want to call it. When you think of a country that has high quality, Japan is one of them. The poor ratings and sales could be used to talk about subjects I mentioned, or like how Chainsaw Man could be improved, but to many fans, the anime is perfect. Instead, they focus on more mundane topics like how it's popular on streaming services. No one cares. That's obvious. And if you're actually worried about the financials, I'll save you the time. MAPPA probably got the bag months before the anime aired. I want to talk about something more relevant to most fans. Most people are just bringing this up because it's insane that Chainsaw Man got outsold by cute band girls and the seasonal isekai. Or they're just using this to say they don't like the anime adaptation. And Blu-rays and DVDs are still a good measure of how enjoyable it was to fans. In my opinion, streaming numbers are not a good indicator of this. The money from streaming just means it was popular. And when did popularity ever mean it was good? Let me explain what I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. So months before the anime even airs, some streaming company, let's say Crunchyroll, buys the license. MAPPA probably shows them a pre-animated PV, some statistics, and maybe a couple episodes. Tops. I doubt they finished the whole season. Then they sign this contract and boom, MAPPA is in profit, or at least break even. Then there might be some clause where they get paid later depending on if they get some more views or meet some minimum threshold. Basically, they can sell an unfinished product. Now, as the anime airs, you're paying, let's say, $10 a month for the subscription. Crunchyroll takes a huge amount of the money, then the rest gets used for other purposes like royalties. However the money gets split, MAPPA gets more than other studios would if they got the same amount of views because they don't have a production committee. But the thing is, you're not just watching Chainsaw Man, you're watching other anime. Some of that $10 is going to Wit Studio, Sunrise, Cloverworks, etc. You won't ever contribute more than $10 a month. It just gets split up depending on what you watch, and you can watch anything, and you will only pay $10. Gotta love streaming. On the other hand, merch like Blu-rays is value add to the industry. I think this money that they add, even if it's less, means the fans enjoyed it a lot more. Like I said, your $10 subscription, you can watch anything, and the pie just gets split. But if you buy the Blu-ray, you went out of your way to buy it. So that's a much better indicator of how loved it was. Streaming numbers is meaningless when it comes to this. The point is, Chainsaw Man was not that well loved enough by its fans to buy the Blu-ray. It's just not that good. Look at the ratings across China, Japan. Think why they are so different. Think. Is the West the anime matrix or something? Like, <laughs> and I wanted to bring up this website that tracks the retention rankings. Basically, on Twitter, people do this thing called live tweeting. And so this website tracks those users. So by episode by episode, how much it's retaining those live tweeters. Um, you'll see first place, Bochi the Rock, 274%. Basically, this means more people, more activity as time went on. Um, you'll see even Berserk at 108%. I'm showing this because, you know, if you say like, oh, Chainsaw Man is too violent or something. No, no, Chainsaw Man 
Pennsylvania is 17th at 68 percent 68 percent now this doesn't really mean much people could just stop tweeting about it because they got bored or lazy or um I don't know they're not even hate tweeting about it to be honest but it just it doesn't really mean much but I'm just showing you this website now I wanted to mention one last thing about streaming the streaming industry is bleeding money only Netflix is in profit according to themselves but fortunately I do think Crunchyroll is the Netflix of anime others are losing billions of dollars just to gain users and new shows by any means necessary that's why Disney Plus and Hulu they probably paid a lot of money for Bleach those exclusive licenses are worth a lot more so Crunchyroll didn't pay Chainsaw Man as high as Bleach probably but they got it for all these other companies in the end you'll get one company that just dominates like a monopoly and you can argue that maybe the quality of shows will decrease over time as this happens I don't know maybe look at Netflix as a case study I'm not I'm not honestly not sure I'm just saying this might be a theory and it's honestly not really sustainable because they're all burning money and only one really ends up the winning like there's sustainable ways like crowdfunding for example Jashin Chan Dropkick is one anime that did that but MAPPA won't do that because they want to take that juicy American money from Netflix Crunchyroll etc and they're going to take that money give them the anime then Netflix is going to have a bigger library and then more users are going to stay on Netflix and then Netflix is going to buy another anime from MAPPA and the cycle is going to keep repeating and repeating until they become a bigger and bigger monopoly that's it peace